always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, a great week. And, man, we're going to be kicking into 2022. You're going to love it. Be impeccable with your word. Replace fear with love. The human mind is like a fertile ground where seeds are continually being planted. When you're impeccable with your word, your mind is no longer fertile ground for the words that come from fear. Your mind is only fertile for the words that come from love. This card's really applicable right now, folks. That's for sure. My advice, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 185, NASDAQ up 130, S&P's up 32. Gold, gold contract cut the bid up 16.70, an ounce. We get silver up 29 cents, twenty-two dollars seventy-nine cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up a buck eighty, seventy-two dollars ninety-two cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. The ten-year note up four ticks, one thirty twenty-two. The thirty-year up eighteen at one sixty-one eleven. And king dollar, king dollar's down four hundred ticks, trading ninety-six oh eight. Euro is at one thirteen. The yen's at one fourteen point one seven. And the British pound is at one thirty-three to one U.S. dollar. Our phone number is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Give us a call, folks. I know what's going on in y'all world. And in the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well, it's a classic, man, no doubt. What we have here is this. You got an expansion of price, huge contraction of volume, bottom line. I expect you're going to, you know, go for these, you know, the spot. The S&P looks to me like an actually, let's see, what do we got? We got today's Wednesday. We got Thursday. Then we get next. Yeah, the S&P can go for its high. When we're at 466, the low of the high is 467.36. And you'll see, you know, bottom line, there'll be a contraction all the way up. This is the crack contraction today is big. There's no doubt about it. You have the, so here, I'm going to set up the bull case and the bear case, folks. Okay, and here we go. So the bull case goes like this. The bull case goes, we came down. I'm going to bring this back from um, November 22nd. So November 22nd, you come off the high. You go down straight to 448. And we, you know, for three days down there, you had big volume. You had volume of 132, 127, and 137. And then what happens? Then you get a nice counter trend bounce, goes back to the highs again. And as it goes back to the highs, what, what you have here is this. And this is where, I, this is why I think we're going back to the highs, okay? When we took, when we had the high, that 472.87, um, didn't take out the high of 473. So we didn't make the high, but you had good volume. And when you normally go into a high with good volume, you're going to get it tested. That's what I think we have happening right now. The low of the high that I'm talking about is 464. So we're already above the 466. That being said, you can see what's happening. As you're going up, your contraction is huge. So yesterday, bottom, while we come off the, well, here's the bullish part. The bullish part is that when we made the turn, on Friday, you did 107 million versus 137. So that's a rejection of lower price, had lighter volume. That's saying that, hey, listen, you can go topside again in a second. Then we're going cut topside, we're contracting on volume. So if we get up to the highs, not, not just to the highs, like right before the highs, and we start going sideways next week, well, that would be a bullish occurrence. The reason being is that if you lay under the highs, I'd say coming into the new year, and you, you just lay in there, that could be definitely a bullish occurrence because you could get another break topside. Okay, that's the bullish occurrence. Here's the bearish occurrence. The bearish occurrence is that in the last six months, every time we've come down, you're coming down hard and fast. And what I've seen in the marketplace is that it, the market just loves to do this, man. It's, it's crazy when you really do get corrections or consolidations. It, it seems to do through two. It really seems to, that you can get out three times. And that's what I think we have here. So when we take a look at this market, you're going to see on July 19th, you get a high volume low. Does it stick? No way. You go from 421, you get up to 453. Bang, we come right back down again to 426, high heavy volume. Does it stick? No. You go from 429 all the way up to 473. Bang, you come back down again. So we'll see where the baby shakes out. But that is the bearish occurrence. And the bearish occurrence here would be that you get up to the high. I'd love to see it actually get over the high. 
test it with lighter volume and reject price. Then that would say to me that that would be the beginning. And what I'm doing here, folks, is this. I'm doing this technically. And then what I'm also doing is that I'm also doing this as to the aspect of where we are in the cycle of what month we're going to be in. And that's going to be January. And what ends up happening is that what you see in January sometimes, everyone's going to, you know, you, it's a big run up this year. If you don't want to pay taxes by the 15th of, you know, April, which you actually probably have to pay them by the, well, it depends on how, how your structure is. You have to pay them by the 15th of April, that's for sure. Unless you hold to January 2nd. And then guess what? It's the next year. So that number that I'm looking for on a consolidation is 427. That's how I'm figuring this thing's going to hold shake out. We'll see. NDX 100, set up the exact same way. The NDX is set up the same way. Bottom line, you know, on the NDX, we turned. Now, this is what the difference is in the NDX. Now, check this out. We still rejected lower price. It had 65 million shares versus 105. The movement, however, inside of the NDX 100 is not as big as the S&P. So that's telling me that you know, it will get to the swing point, which is like 400. Uh, and you're going to have contractions again. And I suspect that the Qs want to go to 350. And when I actually look at the marketplace, I'm much more confident on the 350 than the October 4th on the S&P. The S&P seems to be a little bit stronger right now. That's kind of how this is shaking out. But that 350 uh, in the, well, actually, look at that. That's, isn't 350? I see in the weekly, it's even more intense. Well, I'm going to stick with 350 right now because you know it's open, like wide open here, folks. It's 297, man. <laughs> that would be a trip. 297. Yeah, what is that? That's 30%. If we, have, if we have a 30% correction, man, um, folks that are new in the marketplace will, won't, know that they're going to be screaming that 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 couldn't happen it must be george soros's fault or fault or something we'll hear we'll hear everything trust me stay right there folks we'll come right back